now we go to the um, to the other two presentations about the uh, Iraqi architect uh, whose birthday is today. And uh, I'm glad I, I have the chance to also talk about an architect who is not European, Rifat Chadirji. Chadirji. Uh, apparently, he was uh, an extremely important uh, modern architect in Iraq. He brought modernists to Iraq. Unfortunately, uh, he had to uh, leave Iraq because of political uh, reasons. He lived a long life, but he died apparently because of COVID, because of the virus, because of the pandemic. But he died at 93 this year in 2020. This is what he said. From the very outset of my practice, I thought it imperative that sooner or later, Iraq create for itself an architect architecture regional in character, yet simultaneously modern, part of the current international avant-garde style. So he called his, uh, his um, architecture international uh, regionalism. And this, in my opinion, is not very different from the much better known, uh, well-known expression uh, or formulation, critical regionalism. Between international regionalism and critical regionalism, I don't think it's such a long distance. So uh, he, uh, he was an Iraqi architect, photographer, author, and activist. He was often referred to <clears throat> as the father of modern Iraqi architecture, having designed more than 100 buildings across the nation. The nation. Unfortunately, it's very hard to come uh, across pictures of, of the buildings he built because uh, many of them probably were destroyed in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, an aggressive uh, uh, climate of wars and destruction. And maybe some of them were not documented, but you'll see some pictures. Uh, this was the man. Uh, he was born in, a, in, a, in an affluent uh, family. His father was uh, the, the, the founder of the Democratic Party in, uh, in Baghdad, in Iraq. And he was trained in England, and then he returned to Iraq and started to build. He seems like a sensitive and serious man, an intense man, and he had a long life. Unfortunately, the virus uh, killed him at uh, 93. Here he is, uh, you know, as a young, uh, I guess, rebellious man, you know, he was, in, I guess the, the picture was taken, I don't know, in the 60s or so, you know, he, he looks like, a, you know, almost from, almost, almost from the hippie or the Beatles generation, the beat generation. Anyway, uh, some drawings by him. And uh, in this case, I have many drawings to show because I discovered the site that, uh, archived many drawings uh, from an exhibition that, that were shown. He didn't want to neglect his own culture, a specific culture, the Iraqi culture. It's true, the Iraqi culture in the field of architecture was and is very significant. You know, when you think of Mesopotamia, you know, the Babylon was there, you know, the gate of Isis was there. The garden, the, 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 you know, so the Babylon was the, the, the tower of, uh, of Babylon and, and, and the, the how, how are they called, the gardens, the gardens of Babylon. Now I, I, I'm afraid I, 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 I forgot. Anyway, two or three wonders of, of, of the seven or eight wonders of the world belong to this culture. And um, it's... Uh, it's uh, it's moving to see an architect born there trying to to bring modernity to that. And actually, from what I read, even Saddam Hussein had a side in him which sympathized with modernity, with a modern architecture. And we'll see some examples of this quest for modernity within the, the context of, uh, of Iraq. Here is his own residence in Baghdad. Uh, well, uh, as I said, he was uh, well to do. Uh, he was able to build in this way. Modernity, yes, but there is uh, something else also when you look at this uh, perforated wall here. 
which is um, somehow connected with the, with the, you know, the culture of the place. The Hamad residence uh, and, uh, you know, his attempt to unite the opposites, modernity with the, with the localism of his culture was a difficult one, but uh, maybe uh, perhaps a, a fruitful one. Interesting plan. A large house, of course. Now, this this uh, this this particular uh, structure that he built in 1959 and which was replaced in 1983 was an important work by him. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, it was uh, it was uh, destroyed and, and it was uh, uh, replaced. This is what he did, and you know, very very modern and uh, you know, strikingly um, you know assertive, even if you know uh, its purpose was uh, rather symbolic, but very you know, you see in the back the mosque. And uh, you see in the front what he proposed. So indeed, he was a courageous man trying to promote modernity. And uh, he succeeded. But uh, unfortunately, he had to leave the country. And the last 20, 30 years of his life, he lived in the United States. He didn't build. Uh, and uh, it's sad when uh, an architect so devoted to the culture of his country has to leave it because of political reasons. And he rebuilt it. I think it was him. It wasn't very clear to him, but he was commissioned in 2008. He had already over. He was already over 80 to uh, rebuild the monument, and and this is what he did, and this is what Baghdad has now, and this is interesting too. Uh, uh, maybe even more interesting than than what he did uh, before. It's almost, I mean, maybe without almost a futuristic architecture in Baghdad. Now we, we go through some chronology here. We, 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 look, we looked at some villas, some, I mean, two houses and at this monument. Now we, we, we see other works. This one from 1965, offices and tobacco warehouses. And you see, when you look at this picture, you realize that this must be somewhere in the Middle East or so. There is modernity, but there is also um, the dialogue with, uh, with the local culture. So what he, he named this, the, his approach international localism or regionalism, international regionalism. He sublimated the uh, references to the past of his own culture in uh, interesting ways through here. And you'll see somehow similar details in, uh, in another building or two. It's interesting also that this is a, a you know, an institutional building. It's a business building, actually, but he's able to bring some domesticity to it. It looks so very different from office buildings all over the world. This is a building that uh, has a certain level of intimacy and domesticity, although the program is, um, you know, uh, institutional. Now, another villa, quite interesting, the Hamoud Villa in Baghdad. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, uh, it belongs to its culture, to its place, but also has a certain level of vigorous modernity and is not bad.
the national insurance company here I, I, I have some confusions because a building was destroyed by Mosul because in that building ISIS used to kill uh, gay people in uh, abhorrent ways. I mean, any killing is abhorrent, but you will see actually a picture. And uh, Mosul destroyed the building and it was exactly the building built by uh, this uh, important uh, architect. But I am conflicted about it because in one pictures, in some pictures, it seems this is the building and in others, it seems it is another building. So I, I, I don't know for sure. Uh, I, I, I tried to decipher the mystery, but uh, uh, I, I, I didn't yet. It says Mosul destroys iconic building used by ISIS for gruesome killings. Uh, only three floors remain of Mosul's national insurance company building where ISIS killed young men it, it accused of homosexuality and breaking Islam, Islamic law. And look, look what Homo sapiens does. You know, uh, uh, what can we say? It's very sad. You see in the foreground and you see other pictures, people who collect uh, metal to sell, to make a little bit of money from the building by the father of uh, architectural modernism in, uh, in Iraq. Uh, that's why I said I'm conflicted because the building on the left is different from what we saw earlier, yet they are both named, or maybe there were two buildings, two different buildings with the same function or serving the same uh, company. This is how it looked like. And uh, what you see here is very disturbing, is a young man accused of homosexuality being held by the foot, by the ankle, uh, uh, above a balcony with his face, with his head uh, facing downwards. And soon the criminal on the right would lift his hands and let him fall to death. Unbelievable. It is just unbelievable. And they do it in the name of religion. How could this be? Uh, of course, the Christians had the Inquisition. I mean, human beings can be beasts, indeed. Beasts, terrible beasts. Look what we do. We destroy a good building, a legitimate building built by an important architect because there some horrible killings took place. So, you know, we talk about enlightenment, we talk about progress, but this happened just some years ago. And uh, metal uh, hunters are here to collect metal because, because they are unbearably poor. A young boy who you see the other one smilingly picks up some metal from from the from the cadaver, the architectural cadaver. Sad. Sad, very, very sad. Now a bank by the same architect, a good building, if we can accept that a bank could be a good building, and I guess it could. Banks should, I mean, the function of the building should not bring guilt on the shoulders of, uh, on its shoulders. Buildings perhaps should not bear any guilt. The central post office, <clears throat> this is a, an important building by him from 1975. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's local, it's from Iraq. But it's also, uh, it has a level uh, of modernity that is uh, obvious. So this, this, this is the naming that he himself chose, international regionalism. International because it attempted to be connected and to express modernism at large. And it is uh, regionalism because the architect refused to not connect or not to attempt to connect with the culture of his place and time. This is the Federation of Industries building in Baghdad. And uh, this is another building which I, I couldn't find out how it is called. It has uh, this cylinder above uh, this prismatic uh, lower uh, level uh, corp. 
or body, architectural body, is, you know, what can we say? Is it a masterpiece? Maybe not, but uh, it does bring modernity to a place that perhaps needs it. And this is another building, which I don't know what it is, a house, but I, uh, I, I, I don't know how it is called. And I think this is the last image of this presentation, which needs some improvement. But I like this facade very much. It's, uh, you know, almost Richardson-like, referring to one of the three forefathers of modern American architecture, but it is in Iraq. And it's very interesting how he, uh, you know, problematizes in a way the, 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 you know, what is this, a balcony, and also here, and the thin, the narrow windows, and it's, a, it's, I think it's an excellent facade. That belongs, this building belongs to, to, to Iraq, but also has references to the culture of architecture that go beyond Iraq. Uh, is, uh, is something I think uh, worth contemplating here. This ability to, 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 to create a certain hybridity that uh, uh, emanates uh, richness and uh, complexity.